Well, howdy. That was dumb. I want to do that over. What's going on, everybody? Before you get started watching this video, I'd love it if you could head to blipshift.com slash Hooniverse and maybe get a t-shirt or some stickers help support this channel. And if you are not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. I don't know if they still do the bell thing, but the bell thing helps too. Uh, and like this video and, uh, you know, let's uh, fuck with the algorithm and, and uh, have some fun and uh, do all that good stuff. Uh, and if you don't do any of that, whatever, go on with your day and I hope you're having a good one. Now, you know, onto the car thing. The last time I was behind the wheel of a Hyundai Veloster was on a racetrack at Thunder Hill. And that was, of course, the Veloster N. And I loved it. The car was amazing. And now Hyundai is looking to expand the customer base because this is a Veloster N, but this one does not have a manual gearbox. This one has an eight speed dual clutch. Does it make the experience worse? Absolutely not. So first, let's talk about the looks of this car. I'm a fan of the redesigned Veloster. When they reworked this, I think they did a really good job. The outside looks good. This has bits on it to let people know that it is sportier than your average Veloster without being over the top. The wing is appropriately sized on the back. The only miss for the exterior design of this thing is that we're still doing that goofy door over there. Just give it four doors or take that door away and make it so technically because it's a hatch, hot hatch, it's a three door or a five door. This one is an oddball four door. Just make it a three door or a five door, make up your mind. But having that door on one side is just, it's silly. It's, it's, it's a gimmick for the sake of gimmicks, quirkiness for the sake of quirkiness. And I just think we can ditch that. But other than that, the rest of the car on the outside, it looks great. This red paint is rather wonderful. It all looks good. Standard now with 19 inch wheels instead of the 18s. Um, no complaints there. Now moving on to the inside cabin is a really nice place. It's got a new updated screen up here. Very nice responsive touch screen. And the cool thing about this touch screen is that it also has the latest displays for the end driving modes and the adjustability and the customization of that section. It makes it really easy. There's uh, all kinds of performance gauges. You can change which gauges are being displayed. So the information that is relevant and important to you can be what you're looking at. The sound system is nice. The ergonomics are good. The steering wheel is nicely laid out, feels good. There's two big buttons right here, one with a checkered flag and one with the drive mode so you can cycle through the drive modes or just hit the flag and go right to end mode or hit it again and go to custom mode. I have it so that in end custom mode, ESC is off. So I, it asked me to hold it down for three seconds just to confirm that, hey, are you sure you want to do that? Yeah, it's fine. We're not going to get over our heads in a car like this. Now, what would cause us to get over our heads? Well, under the hood, it's the same two liter turbo four banger hammering away. You don't have to opt for the performance package anymore. That's just part of the car now. There is not a lower powered version. They all make 275 horsepower. They all make 260 pound feet of torque. There is a party trick though. There's a little button here on the steering wheel that says NGS, and that stands for N Grin Shift, which is a, goofy name. It's a dumb name, but what it does is a good thing. For 20 seconds, it ups your torque to 278. So you get more of the torques, which is always fun. Maybe you can use that to power out of corners or pretend you're an F1 driver and you're, you're activating. I don't even remember what it's called an F1 because I don't care about F1, um, but you're activating your boost. So you do not have to pay extra for the performance pack anymore. The car just comes ready to rock. And Rocket does. I think Motor Trend or Car and Driver tested these to 60. They both did, but uh, I think the zero to 60 time is like 4.8, which for a hot hatch is great. Now the icon of icons for the hot hatch world, at least here in the States, has long been the Volkswagen Golf GTI. And for good reason. It's a wonderful, wonderful machine that is comfortable inside, uh, an enjoyable thing to drive, and uh, represents good value for money too, for, for fun. A practical sports car, if you will. Here's the thing, the Veloster N is, is better. It doesn't get the plaid seats, which is probably the only negative against it compared to the GTI, but 
it's better. It has more power. It's quicker. It's just as comfortable. It looks just as interesting and unique and sporty. Um, The GTI is priced slightly lower to start, but the Veloster N kind of smokes it. Now on the flip side with the Volkswagen, you have the Golf R, which sits above this. And you're getting all wheel drive, 300 horsepower. But the difference in speed between the Golf R and the Veloster is minimal. It's not that much. And then the price difference though is up on the Golf R. And then you have to factor in the Civic Type R into this equation as well, because that thing is a monster, 300 plus horsepower, amazing machine. The Veloster N, despite being a 275 horse, is right there. It is, it, it, it's marginally slower than them. And on a racetrack, it probably could even out potentially. Maybe the Golf R gets a little bit more edge with the all-wheel drive, but then there's gonna be a weight penalty. This, even with the DCT, it's not a massive weight penalty. I think it adds 86 pounds or something compared to the manual for a total curb weight of around 3,100, 32, it's under 3,200 pounds. Um, and you're still getting over 30 miles per gallon on the freeway. You're, you, you have a front wheel drive car that is wickedly entertaining. Electronic limited slip diff, uh, adaptive suspension, adjustable steering, um, engine responsiveness, throttle responsiveness, transmission responsiveness. It's all adjustable. It's all set up to have a fun time. It's hard to beat this. I think, uh, I think these start right around $34,000. You don't really need to add any options to them. Um, you can add some stuff down the road, like stickier tires if you're gonna take these to the track, lighter wheels, that sort of thing. Maybe change the brake pads, but it's out of the gate is a just absolutely wonderful thing. Um, and I'm happy that we're even having a conversation about the different types of hot hatches you should be out there buying. Because this is a good one. This is a really, really good car. Were I in the market spending my own money on a half hot hatch today, I'm 98% sure this is the one I'd buy. The Golf GTI has the history and the heritage and all that good stuff. The Veloster N It's more fun to drive. It has a better warranty too, if you care about that. Um, I haven't bought, I haven't purchased a new car in a long time outside of my wife's CX-5, so I I mean, I don't care about warranties personally, but if you do, this has that 10 year, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty, whereas, you know, nobody besides Kia gives you that sort of thing. So let's talk specifically about the DCT for a second. It's actually pretty smooth off the line, which is great for a dual clutch. Um, Paddles are nice and responsive. There's a cool shift light. There's a shift noise you can toggle on and off, or you can just have it in certain driving modes, which is a kind of a smart way to set it up. Uh, And then if you want to shift it by the shift lever, Hyundai set it up appropriately. Pull back to shift up, push forward to shift down. Don't know why that's so hard for some automakers. That is the way it is supposed to be. Pull, 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 up through the shifts. Boom, 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 push away from you when you're down shifting. Keep it simple, that's the way it should go. So the DCT definitely does not hurt the character of this car whatsoever. And it opens it up to a broader network of people, which is great get more people into hot hatches, get them to understand the magic of this segment, and the world is a slightly happier place for the time being. And anything I say about the Veloster being better than the GTI is not a knock against the GTI. Golf GTI is a fantastic car and it is a due to, and it's due to come out with the new one for 2022. And I'm sure that one will be great probably more of the same with just updated styling. I don't really love the looks yet of the new one from what I've seen. I have to see it in person, obviously, to make a full judgment. Um, it should get a little bit bump in power. The interior could be considered slightly nicer than the Veloster, but only just, I mean, maybe. And some days you'd feel this one's nicer. Um, that's barely an argument there. Um, 
I still think the Veloster N is going to be a more entertaining drive than the 2022 Golf GTI. The next Golf R, though, could widen the gap there at the top of the range a bit. I don't know. As it sits right now, though, our sub $40,000 entertaining machine. This is one damn fine thing to put in your driveway or your garage. As far as front drivers go, it's easily one of the most entertaining ones out there. And then just as far as cars go, it's on the list somewhere too, in a good spot. to the road scenes.